and uh, he mentioned the vitamin D3. It's better to take it folate. Folate? No, D3 and folic acid are different. Those are two different entities. Rose, I'm going to let you go here. Real, I'm going to let you go. Cop, if you have any questions about that, uh, send me an email. Folate is a, one of the B vitamins, and it's important. And there is some controversy, actually, around folic acid versus folate. Now, but for most people... The ringworm. Can you give me some information? Yes, on ring, ringworm is a sign of an overloaded immune system. Usually the immune system will take care of fungal infections. Ringworm is a fungal infection. Uh, usually the immune system will take care of that. If there is ringworm showing up, you want to consider that the immune system is overloaded on some level. The immune system is located largely in the digestive tract. So whenever you hear the word immune or autoimmune or anything that has to do with the immune system, the first thing to focus on is digestive health. This is where the, uh, the bulk of the immune system is housed, considering how most of us eat. It makes perfect sense that if you, you know you're, that we're going to have immune issues and autoimmune issues, and ringworm is a manifestation of an immune problem. So a couple of things: work on the digestive system, use the good bacteria, the probiotics, uh, bioluminescent nightly essence, and fermented foods. Anything that stabilizes the the gut bacteria. Don't forget about immune-boosting nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin E and zinc. Those are probably your three most important. Uh, immune system building nutrients, although magnesium is also important. Certainly selenium is important and MSM sulfur is important. Make sure they're on the beyond tangy tangerine, but I would be throwing in an extra dose of uh, vitamin C, maybe an extra couple thousand milligrams a day. And then try some topical vitamin C as well. Topical vitamin C and vitamin C in general has antiseptic, antibacterial, antimicrobial properties. And when topical. You say topical, is that the fatty C or what? Well, the fatty C is the best, but for, for healing the skin from uh, fungal infections or any kind of infections, you may be able to get away with the ascorbic acid. But yes, the fatty vitamin C, tetraisopalmitate or palmitate, ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, or ascorbyl palmitate are definitely the best forms of topical vitamin C. Thank you. God bless you, Rose. Have a blessed day. Thank you, and thank you for the kind words. I need something else, but I... Call me whenever you like, ma'am. I appreciate it, Rose. God bless you. All right, James, California, thanks for your patience. What's up, buddy? James? Uh, James, yeah. What's cooking? I'm a six-year-old male. Hey, James. Generally good health. I do take the 90 for life once a day. Okay. And also HA joint capsules, three of those a day. I've okay. I've got a rash on the left side of my chest below the nipple, and it seems to be getting worse. Okay. Is it associate? Here's what you want to do whenever you have skin rashes. This is, just, this is for everybody listening, not just for James. Whenever you have skin rashes, you want to treat those as a symptom, not a problem in and of themselves. They're a sign of a problem. So what you want to do is you want to see when, those ra when that rash flares up. Now, because as I was talking to Rose and as we've said ad, ad nauseum on this program, there's a very important connection between the immune system, the digestive system, and the skin. The immune system, digestive system, and the skin. So whenever you have a skin problem, you want to consider it to be a sign of a defensive response, and you want to consider that to be a sign, at least first, of a digestive health issue. So two things that you could do here, my friend. Number one, you cannot eat for two or three days and see what happens to your rash. Chances are your rash will start to subside. If it does indeed subside, then you want to start eating as normal, and then you want to watch what happens to the rash and try to isolate specific foods that are linked to the formation of that rash. Now, the second thing you could do, and that, that, that's a great strategy right there, linking your rash up to problem foods and then eliminating those foods. The second thing you can do, and you probably should do, is start to strengthen the digestive tract. Try to support the digestive system. Probiotics, the bioluminescent nightly essence, are key. Any digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes will help. Do them with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. That will also help. If you want to go and throw in a few more digestive nutrients, go get some lecithin granules. Those are very important for all digestive conditions. They'll help you process fats and fatty vitamins. You might also want to throw in some bile salts. Now, you'll get some of those bile salts in the ultimate enzymes from longevity, but you can also add some extra bile salts in there. So, number one, do a fast. Link your prob and and or link your rashes and rash flare-ups to problem foods, and then eliminate those foods. Number two, start to strengthen the digestive system with probiotics, fermented foods, uh, fiber, anything to correct gut bacteria, and provide an environment that's hospitable to gut bacteria. And then also your ultimate enzymes, apple cider vinegar, perhaps some bile salts, and perhaps if you want to throw in some uh, something extra, throw in some lecithin granules as well. 
All right, James, I got to move on. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Anything else you want to add? Thank you, Ben. Okay, God bless you, my friend. All right, let's go to Chris in Florida. What's up? How you doing? Welcome to the Bright Side, Chris. Hey, uh, Ben, it's Chris uh, from Orlando. I called before. You are the man. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I uh, hope you remember me, but I had uh, three kids. Um, my middle son now is 10 years old, okay. pretty healthy. Uh, after two bouts of soccer practice where he really sweat, of course, down here is super hot, yeah. uh, he started peeing red like cranberry juice. Oh, wow. Red. So, uh, long story short, we just we just totally hydrated him, see what happened uh, the next uh, Thursday practice. Uh, same thing happened. So I took him to uh, Nemours. Yeah, Sounds Nemours like... right up the road. Uh, yeah. They did an ultrasound. So they found eight little kidney stones. Oh, my goodness. How old is he? Had, no, he's 10 years old. Perfect health. No, that's not perfect health. That means something's messed up. No, stones, don't. stones don't form unless the blood is very, very dirty. You ever put salt in, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but just imagine in your head putting salt in water. If you put a spoonful of salt in water, the salt dissolves. You put a second spoon, the salt dissolves. You put a third spoon, the salt dissolves. You put a fourth spoon, and all of a sudden you get a bunch of crystals. You know what I'm talking about? You've, yeah. you've saturated the water with salt, and now no more salt can fit in, and so it just kind of crystallizes out. That's a kidney stone. Kidney stone is a sign of super saturated, that's called super saturation, a super saturated fluid, super saturated blood. And the blood will become super saturated when there's something percolating in the metabolism, in the chemistry, usually with sugar. All right, this is a sign. First thing to think about is sugar issues. So is he eating a lot of sugar, bread, or pasta, anything like that? Any um. Not necessarily, but we're right. not as good on the sugar not intake. Just, well, that's the first thing to focus on. It's a sign that the stuff is crystallizing in the blood, and the most likely suspect is going to be sugar. Diabetes and kidney stones go hand in hand. Diabetes and kidney issues go hand in hand. Uh, all kidney issues go hand in hand. So that's the first thing that you want to think about. Now, drinking more water might help him, especially if he's an athlete and he's sweating a lot. But I would be looking oh, at, I'd be looking at restricting or limiting his intake of fast-burning sugars, Anything that breaks into breaks down into glucose quickly, fruits and fruit juice and pasta and potatoes and desserts, etc. And then starting to use sugar metabolizing nutrients, especially this is very important, Chris, especially the water soluble B vitamins and electrolytes. There's a couple things at play here. The B vitamins and the electrolytes are very important for sugar metabolism. And if he's an athlete, he could be losing those as he's sweating. And if he's not replacing them, he could be deficient. And that would be the first thing that I would think about. So get him on the Beyond Tangy Tangy. Tangerine, having a sip, have him sip on that real slow, uh, and then also the sweeties might help as well, and then keep his intake of the fast-burning uh, sugar foods down, and you can replace those foods with high-protein foods, eggs and whey protein, etc., organ meats and fish, and then also with coconut oil, and between the good, the good fat and the protein, not only will he be helping improve his sugar balance and help uh, wean him off of sugar, but also be building muscle, and that's great for an athlete. Got to move, Chris. Thanks so much for your call. Thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it, and I apologize if we left you on hold. That's why I tell you to call in early, you guys. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We'll, uh, we'll continue talking about adrenal health and skin health tomorrow on the Bright Side. Have an awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.